today's deck and jump to the front of the line thanks to today's patron. Priority deck requests are one of the many perks you get by becoming a patron. Consider supporting the channel today. Welcome back to today's build. I'll be your guide to this wonderful game we all love. Let's get started. Today's deck is anything but a pitiful creature. His name is Smeagol, Helpful Guide, and this is Riddles in the Dark. Hang around to the end of the video to learn more about a giveaway. Smeagol is a fragile 4-2 that will give us a ring temptation at our end step if one of our creatures dies. I won't explain it all, but I'll put up the rules text for the ring now. Broadly speaking, it makes a creature harder to block with benefits for attacking, though this is an oversimplification that we'll talk more about with our Sauron deck. When we do get tempted by the ring though, we mill our opponents until they hit a land, and then we get that land. So payoffs for milling our opponents, and for them having cards in their graveyard, are off menu. I will make one remark though about your choice of ring bearer. Because Smeagol is a 4-2, that first ring ability doesn't do a lot to protect him, so we're probably going to try to avoid getting into combat most of the time with him, unless we have one of those single mana reanimation spells. But our other creatures are ones that we're happy with dying for Smeagol's ability, so those are the ones that we'll choose for our ring bear, going to combat and sacrificing after damage if they survived combat. Smeagol generates more value the longer he's in play, and if we can, we'll want to play creatures that come with their own methods of sacrifice. Just like with Wilson, if we can get some benefit from killing them, especially in the form of other creatures, we'll be able to keep this train rolling the whole game. Since he generates value over time, he wants Smeagol out as soon as possible, which is likely turn 3. Mill effects get proportionally stronger against opponents with fewer cards in their decks, and since milling takes cards out of our opponent's deck, we'll want to pick one player and target them for most of the game. I say most of the game because if you mill them out and they lose, you will lose control of all the lands you've accumulated, so wait until you're ready to close things out to finish anyone off. Since we mill the most against the player with the fewest lands, we'll target the player most likely to have the least number of lands, and least likely to be using their graveyards. You also want that player to be playing lands in our colors, so that we can best use that mana. For example, elf tribal decks are a strong target, since most of their mana come from mana dorks and are in our colors, but use your best judgement at your tables. Rampaging Bailoths and Zendikar's Royal are here to help pull off a combo with Smeagol, and at first glance, they even satisfy the condition that I try to set without combo pieces, where they should be cards that we would want to play anyway. With all the lands that we get onto the field, these cards can make a lot of tokens for us. But next to Scoot Swarm, it's not even close. Since we're playing Smeagol on turn 3, we can play this turn 4 and make our land drop afterwards and have it do something the turn it comes in. I'm not saying that that's definitely the play pattern, but the option to do it is better than the 5 and 6 mana alternatives that are harder to make work the turn they come in. What's important is that it makes a creature, not how big that creature is. The swarm also protects itself to a degree, since the tokens it makes are copies of itself, whereas the other tokens we'd get are not, so they're a lot easier to disable. Tireless Provisioner, Tireless Tracker, and Obnixless the Fallen are all great landfall payoffs, but they're not really payoffs that we care that much about. We'll have enough lands that treasures are only kinda good, and our deck doesn't really have any synergies with food or clue tokens, and the damage here isn't really worth the mana cost on Obnixilus. Birds of Paradise is a mana dork and an expensive one at that, but we're only a two color deck, so the mana fixing that the birds brings to the table isn't especially relevant for us, and the mana ramp it gives us is really weak in the face of all of our land ramp. Even on turn 1, the ramp isn't that helpful because a turn 2 Smeagol without anything to sacrifice is just exposing our commander to removal without it to. If for some reason you decide you do want a mana dork in this slot, try out Basil Throw. It's cheap, sacrifices itself, and taps for 2 mana instead of 1. Eternal Witness isn't bad, but we can do much, much better. Having this effect attached to a body would be a lot stronger if we cared more about the enter the battlefield effects, but we don't. So this card's best upside over other regrowth effects is its ability to be sacrificed for Smeagol's ability. But we can get a lot more utility out of a Split the Spoils, which will grab us 3 cards from our graveyard for 3 mana. 
Since so many of our creatures are the kind that have ways to sacrifice themselves, we don't have to use any external sacrifice tech to get them back off the field like we would with Eternal Witness, and getting those back will provide more value over time than the Witness will. Moldervine Reclamation is a bit too top-heavy for my tastes. We're not a deck trying to sacrifice a bunch of things all at once, we're only trying to sacrifice once on each of our turns. Everything after that is diminishing returns, so Death Reap Ritual will be better than this for our purposes. The Ringo South does provide us with a Ring Temptation, which we definitely want, but its only other real payoff is lands, and since we're sacrificing a lot of our creatures, we're not likely to have the board presence necessary to make this really strong. I'd rather be playing another creature that sacrifices itself than this, or at the very least, another creature that gives us a Ring Temptation. Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth, makes all lands swaps, so we can use any lands we take from any decks for our colors. But that kind of utility is really marginal in this deck. Green and black are some of the most played colors, so it's not very often that we'll have trouble finding good targets. And I just don't think the price of the card is weighted equally with the value that it brings us. So, what's our timeline? On turn 1, we'll play Haywire Might and Blood Pet. A turn 1 Blood Pet will turn on a turn 2 Smeagol with an activation of his ability, which is probably the best start this deck can provide. On turn 2, we'll play Golem, Patient Plotter, Jadar, Ghoul Caller of Nefalia, and Sakura Tribe Elder. A turn 2 Sakura Tribe Elder we can crack for a land on turn 3 will let us ramp twice with Smeagol, and Jadar lets us ramp every turn. On turn 3, we'll play Smeagol, and from here on, our mana values might be greater than our turn count by a steeper and steeper margin, since Smeagol lets us ramp so often. Turn 4, we can play Chain Devil, Grave Lighter, or any of our Nazgul. We can also play Foundation Breaker, Merciless Executioner, or Nest Invader, and have mana left over to play on Bombadil's Song, Shortcut to Mushrooms, or Call of the Ring, to tempt ourselves multiple times at a turn. Turn 5 and beyond, we'll need to start refueling, and there's no better card for the job than Compost. Don't be fooled by the fact that this only works for black cards. Since we wanted to target a player whose lands we can use anyway, there's a great chance that we're already targeting a black deck. But otherwise, we can play Momentous Fall, Hunter's Prowess, or Hunter's Insight on our Ring Bearer for an influx of cards. And we can use Sidisi Undead Vizier, Illicit Shipment, and Diabolic Intent to dig through the deck for our win condition. To close out the game, we have three main options. The first is to assemble a combo with Dunedain Rangers to mill our opponents out for the win. The second is to pour all of our stolen lands into a Torment of Hailfire. And the third is Mass Reanimation, Rise of the Dark Realms, or our other effects like Breach the Multiverse or Sepulchral Primordial. This deck is strikingly powerful. The number of creatures in these colors prepared to give their lives for our game plan upon entry is staggering. The lands that we steal from our opponents are so consistent that we'll never be lacking mana, and our draw and tutor effects make it an easy glide to the finish line. We'll never win the game outright before turn 6, but the intermediate game actions we take are really efficient and focused enough that we've probably accumulated enough advantage to do so by then. That is, as long as Smeagol sticks around for a turn. If you can fire off his ability just once, that's often enough advantage to snowball to the finish, so that first turn you play him is when your game plan is at its most vulnerable. That said, among the power 7s that I've built for the channel, this has to be one of the most fun to build and to pilot. Gold Star, Spiegel. Special thanks to all my patrons on Patreon. When I started this channel, I wanted to provide insight into deck building decisions with my videos. In practice, what often happens is I talk for 30 minutes about every little nuance of a deck, which is longer than I'm comfortable with posting to YouTube, so a lot of that discussion gets cut for time. Here, patrons can find extended discussions on their favorite decks, in-depth guides on complex game actions, request priority deck techs, and more. So if you enjoy this content, consider becoming a patron today. One of the things my patrons have made possible is a special series of deck techs that I'm really excited to show off to you guys. When I finally get them all uploaded, I'll be giving away a special collection of altars and tokens that I've made, corresponding to each deck on the channel. For example, for the Merkle Lord of Bones deck, the prize is a set of double-faced altars of the most prominent cards in the deck whose backsides are set in the constellation frame with updated text to show that they're acting as enchantments now. For every thousand views on each video, I'll increase the prize pool for that deck. All you have to do to be able to win is be subscribed to the channel. If you like this video, the next decks I'll be looking at can be found here in no particular order, so if you see something you like, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss them, and check out the playlist in the top left for more. Thanks for watching!